In this video, I'm going to share three methods for creating a pale look on portrait photos. So let's kick off with the first method, which is the easiest to apply. It also creates the palest look. As always, we start with a duplicate of the original. Let's zoom into the face. Now time to apply a black and white adjustment. The trick is now to set the blend mode of the black and white adjustment to screen. As you see, we get this white faded look immediately. Our main goal is to get a pale face or a pale skin. As the skin usually contains red and yellow, we can adjust the red and yellow sliders until the skin really looks pale in a more realistic way. The best results usually end up where the yellow and the red sliders will be opposite to each other. Try to focus on the skin, we're going to mask out the rest in a minute. Ok, this looks about right for now, we can change it later anyway. The black and white adjustment comes with a built-in mask, which is ideal as we don't want this effect to be applied to the whole image. Let's invert the mask of the adjustment by pressing Command I. This will mask everything out. If we select the brush tool, with a soft white brush we can paint back in the effect to the face area. Perfect. Well, almost. Our subject looks ill, so let's fix that by modifying the black and white adjustment. By playing with the red and the yellow sliders, we can really get the look we are aiming at. We could also lower the opacity of the adjustment if needed. Let me group these layers and name it Method 1. So the next method will also be using a black and white adjustment. But let me first duplicate the original with Command J and move this to the top of the layer stack. Before we are going to apply the black and white adjustment, let's have a look at the channels of the image. The idea is that I want to use a channel as a mask for the black and white adjustment. As expected, the red channel is the brightest on the skin area, so let's use that. I can right click on the red channel and select Load to Pixel Selection. This will create a selection from the red channel. Before moving on, let's not forget to reset the channel view so we see all colors again. With the selection being active, we can add the black and white adjustment. Because we had a selection, Affinity will create the adjustment with the selection as a mask. As before, to get the pale look, we need to set the blend mode of this adjustment to screen. As we don't need the selection anymore, let's get rid of the selection and the marching ends by pressing Command D. Just as with the previous method, we can adjust the red and the yellow to get a nice pale effect. The effect is going to be, as I would like to say, a bit more sophisticated, as we have applied a more detailed mask to it. Ok, we now have the pale look, which again has been applied to the whole image. To get back the original colors, I'm going to use the original image again and mask it above the black and white adjustment. For this mask, I will again use a channel. Let me hide the adjustment so we can see the channel info for the original. The blue channel is the darkest for the skin, so let's use that. Just as before, I can right click on it and load it into a pixel selection. I'm then going to duplicate the original image and move this above the black and white adjustment. If I now press the mask button, Affinity again will create a mask from our selection. Awesome! Let's turn on the black and white adjustment. You can now see that most of the effect is applied to the skin area. A quick look on the before and the after. We got the basics in place now. It is time for some fine tuning. First, let's have a look at the mask on the top image layer, which restored the original color. As we use the blue channel as a mask, there's still a lot of areas not strong enough, but we can easily paint over them with a white brush. That looks much better. The image is still too flat in my opinion. Before fixing that, I will duplicate the original again and move it to the top for easy comparison later. 
let's zoom into the face. So, to fix the super flatness, I'm going to modify the blend range of the black and white adjustment in a way that we don't have the adjustment applied to the darker areas of the image. The pale effect should be applied more to the brighter areas. Also, we have a much more natural end result. Let's quickly check the before and the after of this method. Not bad at all. We can still fine tune the black and white adjustment to get the exact look we are looking for. Time to move to the last method. Let's group the previous layers so we don't get confused later. This last method is a variation of the second method, but this time I'm going to use the green channel. Let's start again by making some duplicates of the original. I will then select the green channel and load this to a pixel selection so I can apply this as a mask to the image. Let's have a quick look what this layer looks like by clicking on this layer with the Option or Alt key pressed. This will hide all other layers temporarily. We got a nice portion of the skin in this layer. Let's apply a black and white adjustment to this layer and hide the top original so we can see the result and make some adjustments to the black and white adjustment. As this effect is too much, we can add an additional mask on top of the mask which came with the black and white adjustment. Using a black soft brush on the mask we just created, we can hide the areas we don't want to be affected, which in this case will be the background. The effect is still too strong on the subject, but we can fix that by using blend ranges. Let's lower its effect on the highlights and we immediately get a more realistic result. Awesome! Let's have a look at the before and the after. Definitely a more pale look. We can further fine tune it by adjusting the opacity and changing the blend mode to screen. Pretty awesome. Here is a bonus effect for you. We can also use this layer to create a more golden look. Let me quickly show you how. First, let's set back the opacity to 100%, change the blend mode of this layer to multiply and reset the blend range. We can now open up the black and white adjustment and adjust it so we get this chromatic look. And the quick mix on the mask. Time to color it so it looks more golden and we can do that by adding a curves layer on top. In the curves layer we need to put the blues down, put also the greens down a tiny bit and finally Increase the reds also with a tiny bit. Cool, that looks pretty nice actually. To make it look a bit better, let's use the original image we have on top. I will change the blend mode to luminosity and then update the blend range of it so it applies gradually. Awesome! Let me duplicate the original and move it on top for comparison. Nice! That is pretty good looking. That was the bonus effect. Just had to share with you. Anyway, while I revert back this effect in super speed, I want to thank you for your support and for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Take care and until the next video.